In this video, we'll be solving problem 2.1.12s. Find the future value of an annuity immediate with two interest rates valid over two different periods of time. So we have an M plus N year annuity of one per year. During the first M years, it's got an effective annual interest rate of 7%. And for the remaining N years, you've got an effective annual interest rate of 11%. You're given two future values based on those different time regimes and different interest rates, SM being 34 when you use the 7% interest rate, and SN being 128 when you use the 11% interest rate. The goal is to find the accumulated value of the annuity just after the final payment. This would be a problem where it would be good to use a timeline. So we start at time zero, the present. The first payment is going to be, going to be one year in the future. It's going to, have, going to be at the end of every year. You've got the first M years in which the 7% interest rate is valid. And then you've got the second group of N years in which the 11% interest rate is valid. So here are the first M payments. And then you've got the group of N payments at the end. Based on what we're given, we're going to want to think about breaking these apart into two different income streams. When the 7% interest rate is valid, we find the future value of the first group of M payments immediately after the last payment. That's SM with the 7% interest rate. That is 34. And then for the last group of N payments, the future value immediately after the last payment is what we are labeling SN with the 11% interest rate, and that is given to be 128. The problem says now find the accumulated value of all the, the money amounts, the M plus N payments, just after the final payment at time M plus N. So altogether we want to find the future value, I'll just label it FV, of all M plus N payments at time M plus N. Well, you think about it logically here, it should be what we would get if we take this 128 and add on 34 promoted in time by n years to time n plus n by multiplying 34 by 1.11 to the n power because that 11% interest rate is valid over the last n years. And yeah, it is n years, so we need to raise it to the n power. The answer can be written FV equals 34 times 1.11 to the n power plus 128. So we'll be done if we can figure out what 1.11 to the n power is. How would we do that? Well, probably it would be easiest to use this given piece of information because if you think about it, think about the formula for Sn, it's going to involve 1 plus i to the n. Does it matter what n is? Um, not really. I mean, we could solve for n when this 11% interest rate is valid. We could solve that for n, but it's not necessary. All we need is to solve for 1.11 to the n. And yeah, the i down here is also 0.11. So just take this quality there and solve not for n, but for 1.11 to the n. So I need to multiply both sides by 0.11. I'll have 128 times 0.11, 14.08. And then to solve for 1.11 to the n, I need to just add 1 to that. So it looks like 1.11 to the n is 15.08. You could use logarithms to solve for n here. I I think if I recall correctly, the answer turns out to be about 26 or so. Uh, maybe I'll do that in a minute, just, just to double check that. But to finish the problem, all I need to do is plug this 15.08 in here. I need to multiply it by 34 and add 128. Times 34, add 128. The answer for the future value is 640.72 and that is the correct answer. All right, I'll just remind you 
how to solve for in an equation like this. Hopefully it's not too hard for you. You take the log of both sides. Any log, it could be the common logarithm or the natural logarithm, though most people take the natural log. And I also use the property that uh, when I take the natural log of 1.1 to the n power, the n can come out in front and is going to be natural log of 15.08 divided by natural log of 1.11. Let's see if this comes out to be 26 or not. I'll figure out the natural log of 1.11 first. 1.11, press my natural log button. I'll go ahead and store that in register 1. Natural log of 15.08. This is that. Divide by what's in register 1. Yeah, it's about 26. Okay, it wasn't required in the problem statement, but we could figure it out. You could also figure out M if you like, but you don't need to. It's not part of the problem. The final answer for this problem is 640.72 based on the statement that you can see up here.